Hi. Okay. <clears throat> Eric was a pro skier, lived all over the world, daredevil, uh, bad boy, but a beautiful bad boy. You know what I mean? I mean, like, beautiful inside, abundant, spiritual. Like, Eric was a better person than me. Do you know what I mean? Like, he was naughty. But he was a better person than me. The memories are beautiful. Yes, I've got bad memories, you know? And I mean, of course I've got bad memories. Every relationship does. Um, but most of the memories are fucking beautiful. Fucking beautiful, fucking beautiful. I remember I, we, we, we really crushed six years, you know, like, what didn't we have in there? But I can still remember the feelings of falling in love with him. I can remember very specific moments too. Like being in Norway before we were fully, fully together. After his mom died, I went to Norway and I was still living in Manhattan and he was in Venice Beach. And I'm sitting, I was sitting on the couch and he was sitting at the, at the dining room table, the one that I have in our apartment now that we brought over from Norway. And he was trying to write his eulogy. And he looked over at me and, and he said, he loved me. I was like, did he just say he loved me? We used to start to sit out on the balcony at night during the summer in our gravity chairs and think, Pink Floyd, how I wish you were here. On the patio, and there you can see the out patio, a couple of chairs, and we used to take a little speaker out there a wine and beer, and I just went low weed, and we took their holding hands. Eric liked to do this lazy costume where he'd put earbuds in, and he had a very realistic dildo, and he would hang that out of his pants, and people would say, what are you? He's like, I'm just rocking out with me on my cock out. I was like, oh, my God. So I see, I see all of it. I see the crazy costumes. I see the lights flashing. I see the dildo. I see Eric's face. Like when he proposed, when we jumped out of a plane and he landed first and then he got down on one knee and he's like, will you marry me? I'm like, yes. <laughs> if we backtracked, you know, a billion years, something led us to each other, you know, like all of it, like all of these connections. And Lane was like hot summer day, and we lived on the boardwalk in Venice. And it was this shit show in Harlem. I even had a washer and dryer. Nobody has that in Manhattan. And then I moved to Venice. I was like, no washer and dryer. It's kind of like the shithole on the beach, but I didn't care. And I remember the sun filtering in through those broken blinds, and my head on his chest, and 
That's not the happiest I've ever been. Ever. Feeling completely content. And I always said that about Eric, you know? It's like I wanted to die in his arms. And he got to die in mine. You know, grief doesn't give a shit. It loves to grab you by the throat whenever it feels like. And it terrifies you. I cannot tell you how many strangers I've cried with this year in their arms, how many people have hugged me. It's embarrassing. But it's also not. I also don't care. Because I can't hide how I feel about Eric. I still show people Eric's pictures all the time. I'm so proud of him, you know, so proud of him. I'm as proud of him now as when he was alive. I always show people pictures of like, oh, this man has been. And, you know, he was the biggest thing in my life and the most important thing in my life. And I don't know how to let him go. <laughs> so many memories. Our anniversary, all those things. I told you the first time we made love. Christmas, his birthday, when we got engaged, jumping out of a plane. The hospital's the hardest. The hospital's so hard. I fucking hate the hospital. I hate those memories. Like, I keep getting... No. I just don't know. I feel like I'm in this part of the story. Black abyss. I really claw my way out for these little bright spots, but I'm... Like, yesterday's in the bathroom till 3 p.m. Just... <laughs> try not to take a pill. Try not to have a drink. Just crying and screaming for air. <laughs> Driving to the mountains in Utah, we always held hands in the car. So, like, what reminds me of Eric, I mean, where I feel him the most. Never anything more than the mountains of Utah have I felt him. You go from making memories especially us just constantly you know we we did everything together not in a codependent way <laughs> in the way that we love to you know we didn't have a traditional marriage we were together a lot and at the end of the day all we really gave a shit was about each other and certainly he only really gave a shit about me oh, the blur really started the second that he went to the hospital seen him take his last breaths them telling me that he was dead on the dining room floor. And then reviving him. And then the coma. And then making the decision to take him off life support. I sent him off to wherever he went, you know, with an Emperor King send off. I hope I get to go that way with so much love and people. And, you know, he got lifted up to wherever he went with a lot. I remember Jen sent me that picture. It's just the one that breaks my heart the most, but it's the one that says everything. They used to say that the only time his, like, his heart would like be like crazy is when I walked into the room and he heard my voice. I had snuck our cat into the ICU a couple of days and she sat with him for hours. I shook him, I said, you don't leave me. You don't get to leave me. I could have kept him alive. He wasn't going to die.
way he lulled me from behind while we gazed at the full moon from our balcony. One second, your entire world is shattered. Shattered. Everything that you knew two seconds ago is gone. I ask, you know, what is what is grieving? Grief is grieving is fear. You know, it's uh, it's the unknown. It's the time period between your weakest, most suicidal self and your strongest, most enlightened self. And it's cracking wide open and transforming. Now I can see the process of grieving and what it gives you. It's uh, grief is your teacher, and it's the agonizingly best teacher for what we hate talking about the most, death. I've, I've become grateful for the grief because it helps me see beyond what I thought I knew.